Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about responsive design in WPF. And I actually needed a responsive solution for a client's project that I was working on. And I did some research, couldn't really find any good content out there on how to get a responsive layout in WPF. So I did some experimenting on my own and I found a pretty cool solution. And first off, what I mean by responsive design is that whenever the user's screen size or window size changes, the UI and the layout is automatically going to adjust to fit the user's screen. So we're really talking about kind of a liquid layout here, in other words. So WPF actually has some built-in panels and functionality to help support responsive design, but I really don't think they're that great. So we're going to go over those and talk about their shortcomings. And then I'm going to show off the solution that I came up with. So the first panel we're going to look at is the scroll viewer. And I shouldn't really even say this is a responsive design solution because you usually use a scroll viewer because you just don't want to deal with responsive design as well. So this is really going to show off why you should consider using responsive design and have your layout adjust to the user's screen size. So we have the scroll viewer, vertical and horizontal scrolling, and inside I have a user card scroll view. And this is just a 3x3 grid, and each grid cell has this user card that's just a card that shows a username, age, and favorite color. So let's take a look at how this looks. And as you can see, if we go full screen, looks great. I can see all the cards. We just have this three by three grid. But then if we get small, it almost turns into like a scavenger hunt because you have to perfectly align this horizontal and vertical scroll bar to find the content that you need. So based off that, I don't think the scroll viewer is the best solution and specifically horizontal scrolling. So whenever you get into using two scroll bars, that's when you start to get that scavenger hunt feel. So not gonna be using horizontal scrolling. So let's go ahead and just disable that for the rest of this tutorial. Now next up, I have a user cards grid view. And this is using a grid for responsiveness. So let's take a look at the user cards grid view. And just three columns here. But the most important part about this grid is that it has column definitions with width star. So by specifying star, that means that each column is going to fill the max amount of space possible. So that sounds like responsiveness because when your screen gets big, your columns are going to get big. Or when your screen gets small, your columns are going to get small. So let's take a look at how this looks. And if we get big, the columns get big as well. And then if we get small, the columns get small. Now, that's great. But now if we get really small, the columns don't even fit the content that we have. Because our cards are just so small, it just isn't possible for each card to fit the content that it needs. So grid column definitions of star aren't great when your screen size gets small because it just simply cannot fit the content. And then if you get too big, your cards just look ridiculously big as well. Of course, that's not a big problem because you could specify a max width here of 800. So I'm not going to hold that against the grid, but it's mostly a problem when your grid gets too small. So last but not least, we have the user cards wrap panel view. And this is just simply using a wrap panel and just has three cards in it. And I really think this is WPF's like main responsiveness solution, but I don't think it's that great. And we're going to take a look at that. So it looks pretty good so far. If we begin to get smaller, the cards simply wrap. But the biggest problem we have here is that it just doesn't line up. So this card up here is wider than this card down here, and it just doesn't look good. So you might be thinking, okay, not a problem. Let's just give all of these an equal width, like that. And now if we look at that, you know, it looks pretty good. They all line up. They all wrap pretty nicely. But the issue is, since we gave them a hard width, if our screen size goes underneath this 300, we're simply not going to be able to see 
the entire card. We'd have to bring in a scroll viewer or something like that, and then we're back to square one because we know that the horizontal scroll bar with the vertical scroll bar just isn't fun. So we're not going to be able to specify hard widths here, and we would just have to live with our cards not being equal widths and not lining up. So those are the issues with scroll viewers, grids, and wrap panels. So what the heck are you supposed to use? And I decided that the best solution was a stack panel. So let's bring in a user cards stack panel view. And what we're going to do is just have a stack panel. And I'm going to vertically align this at the top. And inside of this stack panel, I'm just going to copy these three cards like that. And then I need this component's namespace as well. So let me bring that in real quick. And there we go. So let's take a look at how this looks just without doing anything. And looks pretty, oh, didn't actually change this in our main window. So let's go ahead and use the user card stack panel view. And now, as you can see, this is actually a pretty good solution. So if we get really small, look, we're super small right now and we still support our cards. And if we get really big, we still support our cards, but this just looks ridiculous because these don't need to be vertically stacked. They could be horizontally stacked easily. So what we're gonna do is tell our stack panel that when the window is big, that it can stack horizontally instead of vertically. So to do that, we're gonna use a style on the stack panel. So set up the style, target type, gonna be a stack panel of course. And this style is just gonna have a trigger inside of it. It's gonna be a data trigger. And what we're gonna do in this data trigger is check if the width of the window is greater than a specific number that we specify, then we want the orientation of the stack panel to be horizontal instead of vertical. So to do this binding, we're gonna to bind to the actual width of this user control. So let's actually just give this user control a name so that we can reference it in this binding right here. So element name is root. And what we need to do is check if this width is greater than a specific value. So we can do this with a converter. And I have a converter already defined here. It's called a greater than converter. So what this converter does is it takes in a value and it takes in a parameter. So in our case, the value is gonna be the actual width that we're binding to. And what it's gonna do is check if that value is greater than a parameter that we pass into this converter. And if it is, it'll do whatever we specify inside of this data trigger. So let's bring in that converter. So we'll call this namespace converters. Just bring that in. Let's add that converter as a resource to our user control. So converter is greater than converter. Give it a key so that we can actually reference it as a static resource. And there we go. So now, down here in our converter, we can point that to the greater than converter. And as we mentioned, this converter takes a parameter. So the parameter that we're going to use is just 400. So what we're doing is if that width is greater than 400, then this binding is going to return true. So let's set that as our data trigger value, true. And last but not least, if the width is greater than 400, we're going to set the orientation of the stack panel to horizontal. And now, Let's go ahead and check this out. So here we go. We have our stack panel. We're gonna get small, and then we hit that 400 width, and now we're stacking vertically. So this is awesome. This is super responsive. We have them laid out horizontally. When we get small, it just does them vertically, and we can just scroll through our cards. Now, the main issue here is that you have to play around with this value a little bit, so if we did say 300, 
that value is not big enough because right here we're greater than 300 so our cards don't switch back to the vertical stacking like they should but then once we get under 300 they go vertical so you have to play around with this number and make sure you have it right you might want to make it even bigger just to have a little bit of a buffer just to be safe so another problem that we have with this is that you know this takes a lot of work specifying this data trigger and this is like you know six lines so that's another thing that we're going to go over soon how to make this a little bit less code but we're going to save that for another episode anyways i hope this is a useful solution on how to achieve responsive design in wpf again going to be exploring this a little bit more finding more solutions so you can do all kinds of things for any window size in WPF. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, criticisms, or comments, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. But other than that, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you.